Lisa loves the Ayla Padre X on a do. Today is St. Patrick's Day, hence the Irish t-shirt. Um, what I want to bring you today is was originally a um, book tag by Amy McLean, whose details I will note below. Um, she writes her own novels, does a lot of reviews, things like that. She did in her original video, which I will link, um, incorporate some movies into the answers to the questions. So I decided to um, basically answer all the questions in movie format rather than books because I don't read very much. I used to a lot but um, with a seven-year-old that's very noisy in the house. Reading is just a near impossibility sometimes and when he goes to bed I just want to veg on the sofa and watch movies and crap to be honest. So anyway I will, um, these questions were originally on my telephone, on my mobile cell, um, and in my wisdom, my Irish wisdom, well, people like to joke that we're stupid, don't they? Um, I started the, the video, started the vlog and thought, hang on, my questions are on the phone. So then I had to write them all down and they're quite wordy. I will link them below. So. This is the book tag turned into the movie tag for my purposes and it's the nope movie tag. So, question one. Nope ending. A movie ending that made you go nope, either in denial, rage or simply because the ending was rubbish. There's a few. I won't go into loads of detail, I don't want to keep you all day. First of all I'll say signs. I really like the movie. It's very tense, it's it's just a really good movie. I think it's one of the few that does encapsulate the fear element of, of there being things from other planets. But the ending, um, it just showed way too much. It was... Sometimes a glimpse of something is much more terrifying than being able to sit there and look at it for five minutes. And although some of the movie was tied together really nicely at the end with explanations for certain things that were unexplained through the rest of the movie. I don't want to give anything away here. Um, I just felt that they showed too much of the otherworldly visitor at the end of the movie. Ruined it for me. Titanic. There was room on that door for both of them. Um, War of the Worlds. If you do watch my vlogs you will realise I am a Tom, Tom Cruise fan. I know a lot of people aren't. I am. War of the Worlds, I really enjoyed it up until the ending. Um, it just, it fell apart for me. It, it just had so much potential and that potential was just shot. Uh, it's just a shame. Um, my husband really wants to see Ulysses made into a movie and he thinks Tom Cruise would be really good in the role. Not so sure, but there we go. Mm. Right, the last one I've got in this list is The Village. This one is set around about the turn of the century, as in not the one just past, the one before. <coughs> um, really good, really interesting. A lot of people felt it was very slow. Um, I liked it. I thought it was really good. Until the ending. Um, it was about a village that were scared of going outside its own boundaries. There, were like, there was like folklore and tales of monsters. And at the end, it turns out... Um, that we are living in the present day and it's just like an artificially built compound. It's all fake. So the entire premise of the entire movie is rubbish. So what you're buying into and really enjoying is just ripped from under you. <clears throat> so that's that's two there that Mr Shimmelin's guilty of. Right, number two. Nope, protagonist. A main character you dislike and drives you crazy. <clears throat> right, I've written down two here. I thought long and hard about this and nothing was coming to mind of people that intensely annoy me. And then I come up with two. One of them isn't from a movie. Well, there may have been a movie, I'm not sure. Scrappy Doo. Why? Why inflict it on us? Scooby Doo, yes, brilliant. Scrappy Doo. Oh my god, even as a child. Let me at him! Let me at him! I hated him. He just irritated the arse of me. He still does. Um, and the second one, Jar Jar Binks. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, I know a lot of Star Wars fans probably love Jar Jar Binks. I just find him a bit of a non-character, a bit stupid. <clears throat> I actually went to see this movie, um, where he makes his first appearance at the Phantom Menace, um, at the cinema with a friend, um, male friend who big Star Wars fan, big sci-fi fan. And when Jar Jar Binks came onto the screen, and for the first 15-20 minutes of this movie, I was in inconsolable, hysterical laughter. The tears were running down my face. He got extremely irritated because I should be taking this all very seriously. But just the sight of Jar Jar Binks, and it, it just, it cracked me up. It just did. <clears throat> and the very thought that I meant to take that seriously. So he'll fall into that category. Number three. Nope series. A series that turned out to be a huge pile of nope after you've invested all that time and energy on it or a series that you gave up on because it wasn't worth the time. Again, initially this is meant to be directed towards um, books but <clears throat> for movies I've written down three. There are loads more. The t first three that come to my mind are Alien. Probably not going to be a popular choice. In saying that I preferred Aliens to Alien but when we go down like Alien versus Predator then we go down to um, Prometheus. These things on their own as standalone movies yeah fair enough but they just they did enough of it. They, they never surpassed the first movies in my opinion. <clears throat> um, Resident Evil. The first one fair enough. Resident Evil for anyone that knows me at all well is my favourite um, game to play. Um, the first one, fair enough. It wasn't as good as I felt it could have been, but the rest were just rubbish. And lastly, Pirates of the Caribbean. First movie, really good fun. Jack Sparrow, amazing character, fantastic. Love the fact that it's based on Keith Richards. Um, my husband is a massive Rolling Stones fan, and in particular Keith Richards. He loves Keith Richards. And Johnny Depp just has the character down so well. And and then, well, I suppose it's on a later movie, Keith Richards just having the cameo was awesome. But the last couple of Pirates movies, I haven't enjoyed. I find them very boring and they just dragged. And it's just making a movie for a movie sec. It's like milk in the industry because they're popular. So that's what I've said for that one. Number four. Um, there are 12 questions, so quite a few. Nope, popular pairing. A ship you don't support. I didn't really understand a ship you don't support when I read the question, so I had to look it up. Um, a ship meaning a relationship you don't support. So I have written, I only could come up with two here, one of which is um, Robert Pattinson and what is her name? You know the girl I mean in Twilight? But just not a fan of Twilight, just the whole concept, the whole way they did vampires, making them sparkly and... I will admit, it's very pretty. I like the whole sparkly skin thing, but tying that to vampires, I don't like. Um, her name's escaping me. I just don't enjoy her as an actress. Um, he, to, as an actor, is dull to me. Just never bought into it. And the other one, where is it? What have I written? Right, this is a really unpopular thing amongst women. Bridget Jones's Diary. I don't think she should have ended up with Colin Firth. Nope. What woman in that position is going to choose Colin Firth over Hugh Grant? It's just not going to happen. Okay, Hugh Grant's a bit of a love rat, but Colin Firth's character is just dull. So, that one. Um, Number five. Nope. Plot twist. A plot twist you didn't see coming or didn't like. Not going to waste any time with the first one. I've answered it twice in the previous vlogs. A plot I didn't see coming. The ending of the original Saw. Um, a plot twist that was nope. I've got two written down here. One of them is not a movie. Dallas. You're all going to know what I'm talking about. Bobby Hewing in the shower and the entire previous season has just been a bad dream of his ex, of his ex-wife's. It's just like, what are you doing? And Dexter. Dexter is right up there in my top three all-time favourite series. I love it. Love the character, love well, the supporting cast, just love it. The ending was terrible. 
absolutely abysmal. Um, I don't know what upset me more, the ending of Dexter or the end of Medium. Um, <clears throat> Medium, I absolutely adored. I loved the family, the Dubois, the whole, the interaction, the husband, everything. You just like watch the kids all growing up and then how they ended Medium. I'm not going to say what they did because some people may watch it or may want to watch it. A friend said to me, the same friend that um, thought Sin City was crap and um, also got cross at me for laughing at Jar Jar Binks. He thought the ending of Medium was really good and I was going to really like it because it drew an indefinite, uh, a definite line underneath the, the storyline. I hated it. Um, that's all for that one. <clears throat> okay, number six. Nope, protagonist, action or decision. A character decision that made you shake your head. Nope. There are so many of these. Um, right. I will just put at the forefront of this, in horrors, women running up the stairs in houses where people's chasing them. Where are you going to go? Women falling down when people are chasing them. Why do they always fall down? But two specific ones I've got is the descent. When the girl has to go, if you haven't seen it, it's about a group of people that go um, back into a cave underground. One of the girls, when looking for friends that have been lost, goes into the cave with um, a police officer and he handcuffs her to him so that she doesn't run away. Um, obviously if you're watching a film with any horror element and you know that her friends have come to some mischief, when you see him handcuff her you're already shaking your head no. It's like that's not going to end well and it didn't. Um, and the other, where is it? 28 weeks later. Um, if you watched my last vlog, you will know that I preferred this one to 28 Days Later. Um, Ro Robert Carlyle, an actor I really like, um, in this, right at the start, he abandons his family when they're attacked by zombies and just leaves his wife to die, which, I think his wife and child, which is just, oh, phew, why would you do that? Anyway, that's not the nope, that's nope enough, but later... Um, when he actually finds his wife has not died um, because it turns out that she is just a carrier of the gene she is not going to die he cannot resist the temptation to give her a kiss now he knows what's going on he knows that when he last saw her she was about to be attacked by zombies and he kisses her and automatically contracts the virus and proceeds to kill her and everyone around him which is like what are you doing? Um, number seven, <clears throat> a genre, a nope genre, a genre you will never like, mafia or mob movies. Um, I haven't seen The Godfather or its following movies. I'm not arguing that they're probably really good. I do want to watch them, but as a rule, I do not like movies about mobs, gangsters or the mafia. It just... It bores me. It's too samey. Um, number eight. Nope. Format. Now, I'm going to skip this one because I think um, when Amy did this, it's more really suited to books. Uh, like a format of, of novel book that you don't like. So there's nothing really I can say with that about movies. I will say, actually, there is. I'm not a fan of 3D. Um, I don't feel that it works very well. I think sometimes in animation it can work, but... On the whole, I don't think the technology as yet is good enough to do justice to the 3D technology, so I don't particularly enjoy movies in 3D. Um, number nine. Nope. Trope. I had to look this up. I didn't know what a trope was. I have since... Where am I? I have since learned that a trope, if anyone else doesn't know, is like a something that happens all the time that's like a I can't think of the word I'm trying to say I'll, I'll answer it and then you'll maybe know what I mean so one that really irks me is that in movies the beautiful people always have to be good and anyone that's remotely unattractive overweight old is bad my husband always used to get really annoyed there's a British program called the bill it's um, like a police program <clears throat> And any time there were ever any criminals caught at some stage in it, they were always 
like rockers, they had long hair, um, like every single person wearing a Metallica t-shirt or with a ponytail is, is automatically a criminal. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, where am I? Yeah, the other one I will say in movies where the guy always has to save the girl. Getting really tired of that, guys. It's it's sexist. Yeah, guys are physically stronger than women. I'm never going to contest that. But I'm getting tired of stupid women falling down and running upstairs. So stop it. Um, Number 10. Nope. Recommendation. A movie recommendation that is constantly hyped and pushed at you that you simply refuse to watch. This is going to link in with a previous answer. Um, gangstery, mobby. I'm not a fan of a certain sort of British, um, probably American too, but the ones that are coming to my mind are British gangster movies along the line of Snatch and Lockstock, you know, that sort of thing. I haven't watched them. I don't want to watch them. Don't like them. Not interested. So, what are we? Number 12. Did I do what number did I do last? Last. Oh, that was number 10. Sorry, number 11. Nope, cliche or pet peeve. A cliche or pet peeve that always makes you roll your eyes. Okay, that's a bit similar to trope for me, unless I'm misunderstanding the, the meaning. Right, my biggest pet peeve in movies that they always do is the, the absolutely stunning, beautiful... She could be a model, nerd girl that wears glasses, wears her hair in a ponytail, doesn't wear makeup and wears baggy boy clothes. That, oh wow, no one noticed that she's absolutely beautiful when she takes her glasses off and puts some makeup on and lets her hair down. It's, uh, really, you know, it's what, what are you teaching young girls that aren't beautiful when they take the glasses off and put their hair down? It's crap. I don't like it. There's just too many movies, in my viewpoint, concentrated on looks when it comes to women. And getting more so with men now also. Um, every man you see in every movie is ripped. Um, <clears throat> I, for one, as a girl, and I know an awful lot of other girls aren't bothered, you know, there's always been male sex symbols that we loved growing up that weren't ripped. You know, Michael J. Fox, and he was short. And every girl in the world had a crush on Michael J. Fox after Back to the Future. There's probably loads of examples, but why does every man have to be ripped and every woman have to be like a model? Just stop it. Right, um, where was I? Number 12, nope, love interest. A love interest that is not worthy of being one. A character you don't think should have been a viable love interest. Right, <clears throat> this is not a specific character. This is something overall that irritates me. In movies, it's becoming increasingly the case that the male lead is twice the age of the female lead. We are supposed to believe it viable that a woman that's obviously in her early 20s is with a man in his 50s. Yes, it happens, generally because the guy's loaded and the woman's lazy and attractive. But it tends to be the case more and more and more. Even to the point that if a woman is considerably older than a man in a movie, that has to be the subject matter of the movie. It's just so unlikely and so ridiculous. Like, look at The Graduate. If that was the other way around, it would just be a normal male-female lead in a movie. It's, why can a man date someone 30 years his junior and a woman can't? And to actually give you an example of that, I've written down the ages on here. Um, she never gave away what the movie was or who the lead was, but Maggie Gyllenhaal, when she was 37, was told that she was too old to play the female lead against a man that was 55. So she's nearly 20 years younger than this guy, but she's still too old to play his love interest. What gives, really? So, I know that's not a specific love interest, that is not viable, but to me it's... Do they need to stop it? There's actresses out there, fantastic actresses, that are still really beautiful if that's important to you as a, a leading lady. But these women are fantastic and they're not getting the work, they're not getting the credit. 
women that are older are not feeling attractive, they're not feeling, you feel like once you hit over the age of 30 as a woman, that you basically disappear. You should go hide yourself in a hole. Why are you in any existence? <clears throat> right. Um, number 13. Nope. Movie. A movie that shouldn't have existed that made use... Oh, I've written this in shorthand, so I'm trying to read my own writing and it's not good. A movie that shouldn't have existed that made you say nope. What have I written for this? Right. I've written down a few. <clears throat> Going back to the previous answer, Shallow Hal, a movie about how disgusting a big fat woman is. So this guy can only see Gwyneth Paltrow as she, as Gwyneth Paltrow looks in real life, beautiful, slim. But in actuality, she is really, really large, really big. But everyone else can see that apart from him. And the entire movie is basically everyone looking at him and going, why are you with that? And again... What is that to be teaching women? Okay, at the end it's all, oh, it doesn't matter what you look like. Again, why are we making a movie about it? You know, so what? The woman's carrying some extra weight. <clears throat> Just don't like it. Um, The Happening. It was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I've heard some people say it was really good. I didn't think so. Sex and the City movies. I'm a big fan of Sex and the City, the series. I loved it. Um, The movies, not so much. The second movie, awful. First movie was okay, but none of the movies were near how good the series was. Um, anything after Jaws. Sequels to Jaws. No, why did you do it? It's a classic. Leave it alone. Don't make it again. Or make a sequel. Lastly, I've written Marley and Me. Why torture us like that? Honest to God. That movie, I saw it in the cinema. I wasn't prepared for the storyline. I don't tend to read an awful lot before I go about what something's about. When you see that the two main people in a film are Owen Wilson and Jennifer Aniston, your automatic assumption is, oh, nice, light-hearted, romantic, funny movie. Oh, we'll go see that and it's got dogs in it. At the time when I watched that, um, myself and my husband had an el elderly dog called Chewy. Had a lot of problems with his joints, arthritis, very stiff <clears throat> in his teens. His teens, he maybe would have been 12. Oh my God, the saddest, saddest thing I've ever seen. There was a woman in the cinema, two to three rows behind us, that was audibly wailing. There was sniffing everywhere. I had to look away from the actual movie. I had to like try and distract myself because I knew that I was already like, oh, but I didn't want to start making noise. It was awful. Don't torture us like that. Okay, number 14. <clears throat> Sorry for all this page flipping. Nope, villain. A scary villain that you would hate to cross and would make you run in the opposite direction. Oh, there's so many. I've just listed a few. Leatherface. He's right at the top for me. Freaky as hell. Hannibal Lecter. For some reason I have... A massive amount of admiration for him as a character but would I want to be left alone in a room with him if he fancied something to nibble? No. Um, Pinhead, scary. To me not on the same level as Leatherface but still. And Jason Voorhees. Again, I don't know if it's the, the anonymity of the mask, what it is. He freaks me out. And can you call this a villain? The house in Omitaville? Oh my goodness, growing up scared the bejesus out of me. But in that, my top answer is Leatherface. Only got two left. Number 15, nope, death. A death, a character's death that still haunts you. I've already told you one, Marley and me. Wrong, don't do it. Um, John Coffey in um, The Green Mile, so, so sad. Just such a lovable character and the childlike innocence of him and the fact that he's frightened of the dark. So when they put him to death in the electric chair, he asks for them not to cover his head with the with the, the, the bag sort of thing. It's just so sad. It's broke my heart. Um, the Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. This is a fantastic movie. I went to see this in the cinema myself. 
Um, it's the one about um, German prisoner of war camps. Um, and it just opened... Of course, we all know how wrong it all was, the horrendous nature of it. Um, but this one puts it all across through the eyes of two children. On one of the children is the child of one of the German officers responsible for the camps. And the other child is a child that lives in the camp. And they meet through like the wire fence and they become friends and it's a heartbreaking movie um i would really urge you to watch it if you haven't seen it it's really really it's a really good movie a really sad movie a really upsetting movie but it's good um i've ended with um oh sorry wilson the ball in castaway i actually shed a tear when a ball floated away from tom hanks in castaway Call it what it is. Uh, I cried. Um, I've ended with three cartoons. Bambi is, er, sorry, her mum, his mum. Why? Um, Mufasa, The Lion King. Why do, oh, I don't know. It's just, they're kiddies movies. You're upset at the kiddies. And the most upsetting death in a cartoon ever, as far as I'm concerned, Ellie in the movie Up. Every time I watch that movie, it makes me cry. It's so so sad um yeah anyway so there you are it should be noted about me though that um i cry at pretty much everything um victoria from two vloggers more has said she's the same if something is designed to make you cry i will generally cry sometimes even if something shouldn't make you cry i will cry i have been known to cry at advertisements on the telly so there you go last question Nope, author, who you had a bad experience with and have decided to quit. Again, I'm not doing this about books, so I changed the question into director. <clears throat> and I came up with... Where's my answers? Looking down a list of movies that certain directors has done, I came up with a twosome of Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer. I will read you some of the movies they're responsible for and you will get my decision. Meet the Spartans, Date Movie, Disaster Movie, Epic Movie, Vampires Suck. I cannot stress how much I dislike movies like Epic, what's it called? Epic Movie, Disaster Movie. It's in the same vein as um, Scary Movie. I hate that as well. I hate movies taking the piss out of other movies. I don't know, it's, it's not funny to me. It just does not make me laugh. So, there we go. That's... I would probably, unless they took a complete change of direction, those kind of movies, I just am not going to watch. So, Jason Friedberg and Aaron Seltzer for the last one. So, I got through it all pretty much on skid. Um, Hope you enjoyed that. I am not going to tag anyone in this um, because I'm conscious that I've tagged um, quite a few people in a couple of vlogs fairly recently um, and I know all people's channels has got their own subject matter so um, it's not really fair that I keep tagging people. I will say if um, it's something you want to do, if it's something you want to do as was originally intended about books, fire away by all means. I'd be really interested to see anyone's answers. Um, I will link to Amy, Amy the original lady that put the vlog out. I will link to her channel and um, her answers um, and anyone that fancies doing it let me know you've done it I would love to watch it and that's it for me today so it's over and out from Lisa Loves <laughs>